Well guys, after playing guitar for so many years, I think I might have finally damaged my hearing. As I mentioned at the top of the video, I think I may have finally damaged my hearing. I've been playing guitar for many years and the last 10 years I've been jamming with the same group of friends uh, and we jam for uh, I'd say three hour sessions when we get together and these sessions tend to be rather loud. I'm pretty sure we crack 120 decibels easy and um, after so many sessions like this I would always leave the session with some ringing in my ears which I guess is to be expected because I was foolish enough to be playing without any hearing prote protection. So I would get ringing in my ears and I would just ignore it and eventually it would go away. At first it would take a few hours, then later on a few days. Well lately um, I have permanent ringing in my left ear which is absolutely no fun. So this is known as tinnitus and basically what it is is a high-pitched tone that is always there and it kind of sounds like this so it's not any fun having that in your ear all the time and the irony of it is that it really only becomes a problem when it's quiet so if you're playing loud music it kind of is not an issue but when you're you know, going to sleep at night or in a very quiet room, it could be quite bothersome. So I take 100% of the blame for this because, you know, I've been playing for a long time and I know that whenever you leave a session or you leave a concert or anything and you have any kind of ringing in your ears, that basically indicates that you've damaged your hearing to a certain degree. Now, it may not be permanent, but it definitely is damage. And over time, this damage builds up and your ears will let you know when there's a problem. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it once it's there. Once it's happening and you have that tinnitus, you basically have to get used to it. You have to basically protect your ears from there on in if you wanna make sure it doesn't get worse than what it already is. Now. I know that a lot of professional musicians out there, especially the old classic rock guys, you know, they didn't really take a lot of care when it came to hearing protection. And unfortunately, a lot of these guys now are permanently semi-deaf or struggling with some kind of hearing problems. Uh, and as a musician, hearing is probably the most important asset that you have because without proper hearing, you can't do what you love. So today I want to talk about a few things that I learned and maybe you guys could learn from my mistakes and I can stop other people from doing the same foolish things that I did that caused me to be in the situation that I am now. So the first thing I want to say to you guys is protect it or lose it because basically there's no way around it. If you're exposing yourself to any kind of loud sounds, that's music, it could be your work environment, it could be city streets, it could be just things that are happening around you that are, are very, very loud. If you're exposing yourself to these kinds of noises on a regular basis, you will have some degree of hearing loss. So it's very important to take the steps to protect your hearing as soon as you can. The sooner you start protecting your ears, the longer they will serve you. So a couple of things that are false um, are when people tell you that, you know, the loud music is the cause of your hearing loss. That may be true. Definitely, if you're playing through a Marshall stack and you're standing two feet in front of it and, you know, your pants are flapping in the breeze because you're playing so loud when you strum those power chords, that will definitely cause issues but it's not only caused by loud amplifiers. I mean, you could be listening to music through your headphones, iPods, or even in your house, uh, and you could be playing the volumes too loud. And really, it's repetitive exposure to loud sounds that will do it. Um, and 
you might be surprised to learn that the sounds don't necessarily have to be that loud to cause issues. Really what it is is how many times you're exposing yourself to these loud sounds. Now just to put it in perspective, um, you know, a conversation in a, in a loud room might hit 60 dBs. Uh, when you're playing in a band and you're strumming those power chords and you're playing at a relatively high volume and the drummer's really digging in, you can easily hit 120 or more dBs. And just for reference, 120, 121 dBs, you can uh, basically start having hearing issues or damage to your ears in as little as seven seconds at that volume. So if you're playing a long session at that kind of volume, you're definitely doing some damage. So here are some tips that I wanna share with you that might allow you to take care of your hearing over a longer period of time. Now, if you're older, I'm in my, I'm gonna be in my 50s, guys, so I'm not a spring chicken anymore. And, you know, I've been playing a long time. I started playing when I was 13 years old, and I definitely wasn't taking care of my ears back then. So, yeah, it's taken quite a while for me to do permanent damage, but I definitely did it. And it won't necessarily take that long in certain circumstances. So here are a few tips that I want to share with you so that you can definitely enjoy playing your music a lot longer. So one of the first things, and it's the most obvious of the bunch, is lower the volume, if you can. I mean, there's no real reason why you need to play at full-blown volume these days without some sort of hearing protection. In-ear monitors will help. Any kind of hearing protection is better than no protection. So definitely use some kind of attenuation for your hearing, for your ears. Now, the best type of hearing protection are the types that have a filter that will reduce the noise coming in your ear canal um, by certain different degrees. So you can select how much attenuation you want to have. And these are typically purchased from an audiologist. So you need to make an appointment. You'd have to go to their office. They're going to take a mold of your ear and they're going to custom fit it for your ear canal. And I had a set of these made and um, they're not cheap. They're about 200, 250 bucks, but definitely well worth the money if you want to protect your hearing. The hearing you're going to experience when you have them in your ear canal will be different than what you're normally used to hearing. So this is why a lot of people, including myself, don't like to use them because they basically cut a lot of the high frequencies. And when you're playing in a band situation, it makes it harder for you to hear yourself in the mix, which in turn causes you to turn up the volume so that you can actually hear yourself a little bit better. So it's a kind of a, a catch 22. And then when you uh, increase your volume so that you can hear yourself properly, then automatically the rest of the band increases their volume because they want to be heard over you. And again, it's a catch-22 situation. So it's not just a question of having the um, uh, hearing protectors in. It's also a question of getting used to playing at a, a substantially lower volume or keeping the volume under control as much as possible. And if you're exposing yourself to loud volumes, it's better to limit the amount of time that you're actually exposing yourself to this higher volume if you can. So cut the sessions shorter, have some breaks in between, uh, you know, or just limit the volume. That's the best option to begin with. The other thing you can do is lower the headphone volume. You'd be surprised how loud those ear in-ear headphones get. Uh, and the over-ear headphones as well. You can easily be blowing out your eardrums by listening to this music over the regular noises that are happening in and around you while you're walking down the street in a busy city and trying to drown out that noise with your uh, music in your ears. And this is a very important part of what causes uh, the big majority of hearing issues in younger people. Now, when you are playing with a band, in a band scenario, uh, there's a couple of things that you have to be aware of. Number one, the drummer. The drummer could be your best friend, but the volumes that he'll be hitting when he hits those cymbals uh, are going to be very, very loud and can be ear shattering. 
especially if you're close by. So if you're standing next to your drummer and he, he tends to be a heavy hitter and really is you know, smashing down on those cymbals, make sure you put more distance between you and those cymbals. At least turn your head away from them if you can in a different direction so you're not getting the brunt of the impact of those loud sounds directly in your eardrum. The same holds true for when you're playing with a band and you're in a scenario where you have monitors that are being uh, that are pumping out what the, the singer singing for example a lot of times you might be standing there and those monitors are pointing directly at your ears and you know that's a no-no if the singer hits a really loud um, a, a loud note or puts a particular punch in a certain verse or chorus and screams and your ear is in line with those monitors, you can definitely blow out your eardrums. Now the other thing that you have to be careful of is even little things that you don't often think of uh, that can cause harm. And when I talk about uh, cleaning your ears, for example, a lot of us will use Q-tips. Uh, and Q-tips are very dangerous because you can easily go too deep with a Q-tip into your ear canal and rupture your eardrum or make a hole in your eardrum and that can cause a lot of damage. Beyond that you can also have wax buildup because you're actually pushing wax in. Wax normally is there to protect your ear canal and usually moves inwards towards the outside of the ear canal and it takes away any kind of debris that might be in there, dust, whatever. And if you're cleaning your eardrums you're actually with a q-tip you're actually pushing the wax further in and you could actually be compacting the wax against your eardrum which will lead to hearing loss um, it albeit temporary temporary because you can actually have it cleaned out for, from uh, from your doctor but it is still something that you can cause permanent damage if you're not careful now there's a couple of interesting websites that you can visit and I'll put the link down below and um, one particular site is called noisehelp.com and there's a lot of interesting information regarding hearing uh, issues with hearing uh, volume levels and one interesting thing that they have on this website is noise is a section where they're actually telling you if you're listening to music at a certain volume level or decibel level how long it will take how much exposure it will take for you to have hearing problems or hearing loss at that volume level so you can easily uh, gauge how what kind of danger you might be in on a, on a daily basis if you work in a very loud environment or if you play in a very loud envi environment. So changing these aspects of your daily life it might be very important for you if you want to maintain some healthy ears. Now one of the main problems is that we're not really aware uh, of how loud our environments actually are. I mean if I tell you to explain to me how loud your environment is at work you probably wouldn't be able to act accurately describe that for me. So there's a host of apps and one of them in particular that I enjoy is called DB and it's basically a free app that you can get on the App Store. It's called DB and it's a very nice application that you can use directly from your phone. You just turn it on and it will measure the noise levels that you're at. And it's interesting to see just how quickly the noise levels will get out of hand. And once you know that you're exposing yourself to that degree of volume on an ongoing basis, you can actually take the steps to make things a little bit more uh, realistic and ear friendly for you by avoiding these situations. So unfortunately, I had to experience hearing issues to be able to uh, be more aware of what I was exposing myself to and now that I am dealing with this situation, I just wanted to share this information with all of you out there because I know that most of the people watching my videos are people that love gear, they love loud volume, they might be playing on a regular basis and standing in front of their amplifier either in their bedroom, uh, on a stage somewhere, in a rehearsal studio, or just playing through headphones 
through their Kemper or Axe FX system. And believe it or not, those headphones and those modeling uh, devices that allow you to play your guitar and model amplifiers and pedals and listen to it with headphones on, uh, they get very, very loud. And I've experienced some uh, buzzing in my ears after using those. Uh, and I'm sure probably a lot of you have as well. So please be vigilant and be aware at, as to what you're exposing your ears to because guys, once it's gone, it's not gonna come back. And you know, as you start having issues with ringing in your ear, known as tinnitus, and you get older and your ears naturally degrade over time in terms of their hearing performance, it's no fun at all and uh, definitely want to take care of your hearing if you can. Now, if some of you out there are experiencing tinnitus or experiencing hearing issues, um, drop me a comment. I'd love to hear what you're doing about it, if you've experienced it recently, or maybe you've been dealing with this for a long period of time. So some people might have discovered ways of dealing with this if it's become a really a big problem, but hopefully it hasn't yet. And hopefully you guys that are not yet experiencing any of these issues will heed my words and listen to me and maybe uh, just remember what I'm telling you here today. Protect your hearing because once it's gone, it will not come back. And you know, trust me, it's no fun. So take my advice, protect your hearing. Even if your hearing is perfect, that's the prime time to be taking care of your hearing. So take my word, protect your hearing. Any kind of hearing protection is better than nothing. Just make sure that you keep the, the volumes down and uh, invest in some kind of hearing protection if you can. Now, if you have already experienced these kinds of issues, I'd like to hear from you. Please leave your comments below. Tell me what you're dealing with or how you've managed to work around the issue. Maybe you found some tricks that you want to share with us as to how to maybe limit the ringing in your ears. If there's any kind of uh, solutions that you found that work for you, please share it with us because there's a lot of us with the same type of problems. And um, you know, we're all musicians, we wanna play loud. It really is a lot of fun playing loud, but you definitely have to take care of your hearing, guys. Leave your comments, subscribe, stay tuned, and keep rocking, guys, because there'll be more great videos coming your way right here on Addicted to Gear. Thanks for tuning in.